Um, so what if I was, you know, uh, choosing to be Brutus and I went back, you know, to the Roman Empire and I didn't kill Caesar? Like, why wouldn't then the history books just change? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it fun to start thinking about that? And now let's go even further beyond that when there was actually no Roman Empire. And let's go back even further when the dinosaurs never got extinct and they're still roaming yeah. around, right? So so then you actually start realizing that there's so many different versions of reality because every choice is available and every choice we make creates a new reality. So I truly don't believe in predestiny. I believe that there are are things that we set up for ourselves, right? We decide um, before we are born, we, we create these, these ideas and this vision of what we would like to accomplish. But how we accomplish it is truly up to us here on Earth, right? Because imagine yourself from going from a point A to point B. You can decide to do a straight line from A to B when you're here on Earth. Or you can say, you know what, let me zigzag, let me go backwards, let me go sideways, I'll get to be eventually. Or you can say, you know what, B is way too far away, I'm just going to stay at A for the rest of my life. And so truly you have the power to choose. That's exactly what actually creates the multidimensionality of our universe, right? That's why we're in human form, to learn to use the energy uh, and the ability to create uh, and, and through our choices, through our awareness. So, so every choice creates a new reality and we can go anyway. And, and, and you can think of this in your own life, right? You can think of how different your life would have been if you married a different person, if you chose to live in a different city, if you chose to actually do a different kind of work. Um, um, I, 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 I sometimes think of Mira, who is still a corporate attorney. And oh gosh, I, I think she's pretty miserable, but she's still doing things you know, the way she, she perceives them in the best possible way, right? And and I think of how different her life is. And and that reality exists. And and that reality is is out there. Yes. Like I have a feeling that this might be possible, but I, I feel like it stops in my mind. But I got an, a thought now, okay, everything happens now. Like if something would change, you know, in the Roman Empire, just to take that as, as an example, maybe that is what my our beliefs would be. But we would know that it had changed in a way because everything is now, 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 now. And we always align with a reality that is actually a, a version of Earth, a version of the, the, the events, the political, economic events out there that is most aligned with our belief system, with our expectations. And, and there are circumstances when people are actually very much aware how changing the past changes the present because truly the present moment is your moment of power. In the present moment, you have the ability to impact both the past and the future. It's funny to think how a future moment can impact the past moment, but it's actually happening. And here is an example, a very simple example, but, but very applicable, right? Something that people can understand. Um, if you were to work on your issues with your father, say you had issues with your father, right? There was neglect, there was abuse, he didn't love you enough, whatever the issues were, right? A lot of anger, some resentment, some sense of I'm not good enough, I'm not lovable, you know, all those things that come with, come with the territory. And so if you were to focus on healing that, whatever the healing modality, be it past life regression, be it, be it anything is a healing modality, if you reach that place of forgiveness and truly releasing and truly letting go, all of a sudden, what's going to happen with you is you will start telling different stories rather than saying the same old story of your miserable childhood and how men always betray you and how men are never there for you and men are this and that and your dad was this and that, all of a sudden you're going to start telling a new story. You'll start having, you'll, you'll say, 
Yeah, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't, uh, it, it wasn't, it, it, that wasn't always there for me. But the emotional charge wouldn't be the 100% that it was before, right? It would be in a neutral energy. It would be like, yeah, I don't know what happened. It was just, it, I, it was a fun childhood. I, I had everything I needed. I had such a loving mother. In other words, we will start truly speaking a different a different story. And, and as a result, we are creating a different future, right? A future where men actually support you and you feel loved and lovable. Yeah, I think it's easier, easier to understand that my present changes my future than my past. Like I feel like I can't understand it yet. But actually through quantum physics, uh, they say that, you know, multiple uh, possibilities that that's possible and i think you quoted someone in your book also uh, a physicist as uh, telling that uh, these particles could be vibrating and non-vibrating at the same time yeah absolutely so. it's truly really amazing how quantum physics um has come through it's truly the language of mysticism right yeah. it's truly the, the the language of us having words to explain yeah. what we spiritually know and have been knowing for 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 such a long time yeah. and so and so if this idea that at the present changes the past is a new idea have it sit on the back of your mind i have to tell you it took me a while for me to to digest these ideas because at first it was mind-boggling but it also made sense but I didn't understand how it makes sense right it just I knew it made sense but I didn't know how and 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 then eventually uh, the more information starts showing up your experiences start confirming those new ideas and then you come to a place where you're like but yes that's reality yeah so let's talk about you because uh, it all started with Brian Weiss and it actually did that with me too I love Brian Weiss and his books so you read his book when you were 13 years old and you lay down and you tried a regression and you had an experience can you tell us absolutely that's exactly how it started I read one of his books and it was so intriguing to me and I have to say that at that time I was living in uh, in Bulgaria right and and Bulgaria had just um, and and growing up because Bulgaria hadn't been a communist country uh, for me there was no God there was no no talk of reincarnation or anything like that and so I was very much a, a clean slate right for me the idea was simply a new idea much like much like when a friend says to you, you know, blue ice cream is very tasty. And you're like, oh, oh, okay. I don't know. I haven't tried blue ice cream. I don't know what, it, you know, you understand. And so I, um, I, I, I read the book and I was so intrigued how people will just experience something in their minds, but that will have such a profound effect on their on their lives, on who they are, on, on, on their health, on their well-being, on their conditions. And so I was very curious. And so I decided to do a regression and I experienced a, a truly very emotional lifetime. It was very impactful. It gave me an understanding of my of, of my purpose. It gave me understanding of the of the bigger lesson that I'm here to learn. And imagine what a blessing for that to happen to you when you're 13, right? And then uh, you, of course, became a lawyer, but mm -hmm. then uh, everything shifted because you actually had troubles with your jaw. Yeah. Uh, and I, you went to a, a therapy and it just was fixed in two times or something like that. Yeah. So, so what happened is, uh, even though I had that impactful past life regression, you can imagine as a kid, your life takes you in different directions, right? And so eventually, much later, I was already um, uh, working as a corporate attorney in New York City. And uh, I was... Um, and I developed a very painful physical condition, as you were saying, my jaw. And the the problem was not in the structure in the in the in the jaw itself. The problem was the muscles of the jaw, and there was an inflammation. And because of it, the, the, the there was so much pain in my jaw, and I couldn't even open my mouth to put a spoonful of food in my mouth. I had to do so much to manage the pain because the pain was 
excruciating. And it was always right here in my jaw, you know, always right here in your face. And so I, um, after a whole year of doing physical therapy and, and spending so much money on, 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 on the traditional healing method that my dentist was suggesting and on trying to do everything in my power to, to fix the pain, you know, nothing was working. And so my dentist said to me, you either need to learn to live with chronic pain for the rest of your life or you need to have an operation. And he described the operation involving actually breaking my jaw and, uh, and then reattaching it back with wires. And that sounded horrible, horrible to me. So I didn't like the idea of chronic pain for the rest of my life. I didn't like the idea of my jaw being broken just so we can fix, you know, my, the muscles around my jaw. That It just didn't even make sense. And so um, it was in my desperation for a solution that I actually thought back to past life regression. And I very quickly found a regressionist and I had a, a profound experience where I saw myself as a slave. And as the slave, I had this big metal collar around my neck. And um, and this metal collar was always rubbing against my jaw and, and, and the pain was always right there, right? And so, and so as this man, a slave, as this man, I felt very caught in the, in the sense of being powerless, in the sense of being grateful for even just being fed and being kept alive, you know, that sense of just complete breakdown of the, of the strength of the spirit, right? And, and completely at the mercy of somebody else. And so I, um, I, I left the regression and I spend uh, my, uh, my, the rest of my day basically crying and releasing these cathartic emotions that were coming up. And here is the extraordinary part of this story. The next morning I woke up and the pain was completely gone, completely gone. And so, and so it really, that that opened up a whole new opportunity of of you know development for me and because we were talking about creating different realities i very easily could have chosen not to go down this way right because i had a career as an attorney that was unfolding really beautifully and so and yet um here i am today assisting others with this profound experience and and i have to tell you something even though my, my regression, my experience was a negative one, right? There were all these negative emotions and what a sad story that was. For some people, they experience very happy and very positive lifetimes. And so you, I want to dispel this notion that in order to heal, you need to actually connect with a negative lifetime because sometimes the most beautiful and loving experiences is exactly what the person needs to move forward in their present life. But what I find also so fascinating is that you so believed in this and the healing uh, effects of regression that you wrote uh, Wayne Dyer, the beautiful teacher, a letter. And I just heard a video on him online talking about you. And he was like, you know, oh, it's a beautiful letter, but do I have time to meet her and blah, blah, blah. And you paid all the expenses and you showed up and he was like, okay, I have, you know, one hour for you. And it, I think it changed much of his life. Isn't oh, profoundly, cool? profoundly. Not only his, but, you know, we also impact, because you were mentioning Anita Morjani, we yeah. impacted Anita Morjani's life because I was actually the one who discovered her story. And and I sent it to Wayne, and Wayne loved it, and Wayne sent it to Hey How. So, and, and between the three of us, there's such a deep soul connection. But not only have we impacted our lives, the three of us, but also the thousands and thousands and thousands of people we, we reach with our work. And, and, and yes, it was definitely working with Wayne was one of those extraordinary experiences and very healing and profoundly understanding experiences for him. 
and uh, his daughter Serena Dyer was there as well and got a regression and uh, I just love her I've interviewed her yes uh, you know she's my kind of my age a little bit younger uh, but still she's just uh, I love that they're also younger spiritual teachers now uh, because I can identify really with them you know and uh, yeah I just identify with her uh, and she had this very interesting regression that I'd love to speak about Absolutely. I truly love Serena as a person and I'm so grateful for her for bringing this this story through her regression so that I can share it with people because it's it's really an amazing story. So rather than seeing herself in another lifetime, Serena experienced herself as a being who is the keeper of this um, of this plane where souls will come on their path to be incarnated on earth. And so she described to me how uh, w one of the groups of souls that come through her through a gate, uh, through a portal, is uh, this uh, newly created souls. Yeah, and so can I just ask there? So uh, new souls are created all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, that was so intriguing to me as well yeah. because because you know uh, you start realizing wait if everything is simultaneous and if everything exists have these souls have already existed for billions and forever kind of years right and then you start realizing well it's both it's neither this or that it's really and it's this and that they have existed for forever and there is also souls being created and existing forever because everything is now in this now moment right it's, it's just truly is mind-blowing okay. right and so and so going back to newly created souls and so i asked her if she can describe to me how newly created souls happen right and she said there is simply a need for the soul to be created and, and this need gets conveyed and light and energy gets combined and there is a new soul. And, 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 and she said that all that is, when, in it's all its glory and all its experiences, realizes all of a sudden that there is a desire for new experience. Something is missing. There is an experience that wants to be created and known, a path of possibilities to be created and experienced. And... Um, and, and, and all of a sudden, all that is realizes that it's not no longer all that is, right? It's some of what it is, right? It needs something to complete it and expand it and grow it, right? And so, and so a, a soul gets created. And I heard this and I was truly amazed because what that means is that each one of us is already loved and appreciated before we even come into existence. In other words, our value, our worth, what we bring into the world, into the universe, what, what the gifts and talents that we have, they're already seen as so necessary, as so needed, as so desired that we were created in order to, to, to be that soul, to be that person. And so, and so, of course, when we come here on Earth, we get to be so good at this game of devaluing ourselves, right? We say, yeah, everybody else is better than me. I'm not good enough. I'm, 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 who am I to, to, to shine bright? What do I know to be this person? You know, who am I to follow my dreams? So we are so good at putting ourselves down, right? And yet, all I want to do is be like, you know what? When you say that you're actually arguing with the divine it's it's like you're saying to god yeah god you know what you are doing you are doing the right thing with everybody else and with everything else out there but with me right i'm the only mistake in the universe <laughs> Yeah. So and so, it truly, it truly is such a, a Serena story, and the wisdom and the lesson that comes out of it is so supportive for you, for us to uh, finally get that, that get that permission and give ourselves that permission, and to say, you know. I'm truly worthy because the divine is standing right beside us and saying, I'm always giving you everything you need so you can have the love and the support to create the experience and the reality you desire to create. And if you want to play less than, if you want to play small, 
Okay, I'll give you exactly what you need to play small. But you know, sooner or later, I know you're going to change your mind. I know that you're going to see the magnificence of who you are. And the moment you're ready for that, I'm going to rush in and I'm going to give you everything you need to feel supported as this gloriously expansive person, right? Yeah, it's almost like, you know, we have this huge potential like I'm this big and I choose to be that big. Yeah. You know, when I can be that big. Yes. And uh, But I think probably that's something about evolution too, that we need to either get back to something or understand it or realize it because uh, that's the way we, you know, are brought up to think. Well, here, here's something that I share in, in Beyond Past Lives. I tell the story of a man who experienced what that's, that, that top of the pyramid we were talking about, right? That, that sense of, of source really felt like. And it's such an extraordinary story. I really encourage people to, to uh, find the book, get the book and read the story. And, and he was describing to me that, um, uh, God, the divine, that creative energy really feels like a benevolent nothing. It's beautiful, it's lovely, but it's nothing because it's just and and so the stepping outside of it allows us to know it so much better right and and know it as if for a first time so this contrast um, that we create through our through us limiting ourselves um is much like much like us stepping out and and you know the further we step the sooner we get into the light because it's much like a rubber band the more you pull it away from its original source and its original state the faster it gets into the light right so 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 here's an example I was talking yesterday to a woman and she said, I have been in this abusive relationship. Why would I create that for myself? Now, the why is a bigger question, right? The why applies to so much more of her story. But what she has learned is very clearly she had seen, no, that's not the way to treat me. I need to be honored. I need to be loved. I need to be cherished. So so she saw that contrast and it allows her to project so much further into the light and so much quickly and 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 really claim yes this is who I am and and truly remember herself for who she is it totally makes sense because if you have something all the time you don't know that you have it in a way you don't yes. know how you just have it that's you uh and uh when you come outside of it you realize oh that was that was nice to have and you can appreciate it but it's hard to appreciate it if it's just there naturally yeah. but still i've tried to train myself to be grateful for what i have but mm-hmm. it's kind of uh we're not used to that either just thanking for i can you know i'm running a lot i like jogging i can run like my body is healthy like i i've started thanking so much for what i actually have but i think it's it has to do with training to start thinking like that Mm-hmm, absolutely. I, I did a past life regression with a woman who was very athletic, very, very, very athletic and runner and biker and, and truly took her body as granted, right? Very much like that sense of, yes, this is my body. This is how we do it. And and she experienced a past life where she was a woman w- uh, uh, unable to move her legs sitting in a chair and, and being at the mercy and, the, and other people needing to serve her and being much like an observer for the rest of her life right because she couldn't really engage with life she was observing it and so it gave her such a profound appreciation for her body and for her legs so i really understand what you're saying yeah so um is there any way uh, we uh, can try this like is there things online we can listen to or like audio tapes yeah, absolutely. Um, people can reach out to, to me at my website, mirakelly.com, and I have so many different MP3s and downloads for people to get right away, or if they prefer a CD or my book in English or, uh, you know, in, in many of the other languages it's now printed in. And so, and so um, that is such a great place for people to start, right? Just, just get a download and try regression for them 
themselves at yeah, home. Yeah, you can't do it for yourself. We don't oh, need yeah. you. <laughs> Absolutely. Of course, if people want to work with me, I work with individual clients. So you can also just send me an email and say, how do I get to work with you? And 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 so so anything that people feel moved to, right? If, if it's just curiosity and let's see how this works, get my MP3, one of my MP3s, right? It will definitely create profound healing. And if people want to work with me individually, I look forward to that as well. But I also want to encourage people to reach out to me and email me and tell me about their stories, right? Once they do a regression to share it with me, how how do these experiences help them heal emotional issues, get answers, understand why, uh, heal and, uh, physical uh, challenges. So yes, I love getting those emails. I get them all the time and engaging with people on how impactful regression is and how it has changed their lives i know it's like the more stories you hear the more you believe you know and i, I love that that there are coming more and more stories and people are are a daring to speak about this now and their own experiences yeah absolutely thank you so much mira this was really inspiring and interesting and intriguing and uh, i think i'll have to try one of those mp3s do that and, yeah. and next time around you and I uh, talk we'll, we'll start right there right yes I like for you Let's do that. <laughs> well thank you so much and good luck with all your wonderful work thank you so much and thank you for watching guys much light from Oslo bye bye